Hello everybody. My name is Filiz Sönmez. I'm from Tur Turkey. I will uh, I work as an assistant professor at Universe RGS University in Turkey. I'm currently visiting scholar at UF Semel Pro uh, Proctor Oral History Program. Today I'm here to present uh, my uh, my project entitled Space Memory and Photography across a disciplinary approach to analyzing mid-century domestic life. I will begin, uh, begin with the abstract outlining my goals for this project, then I will move on to the introduction uh, to explain why I choose the duck pond area and also Mr. Ethan House. And, uh, and I will then present my methodological approach uh, by analyzing the Ethan House. Then as a conclusion, uh, we will hopefully illustrate the way in which a tripod approach can enrich oral history. And uh, I would like to start um, by discussing how Mr. Eaton feels about this house. Uh, I will begin with the audio clip uh, from the interview. But see, the, the problem is when, when we were growing up, I, we never thought of this like we're thinking of it now. <laughs> it was just where we lived. Yes. You know, if I'd have known, okay, when you're when you're old, broke down old man, this is going to be the historic district. You know, this is going to be one of those we would have took better notes. But this is where I lived. No, no, just no. a house. But now you are so important person because you have a, a second uh, old house in this area. And they originally incorporated. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I'm the only one that the name on the house is my name. And in this project, the goal is to demonstrate how a methodological approach using a case study of a family's personal photo albums, their memories and their house can cross the three different disciplines, photography, oral history and domestic space, which I have termed a tripod approach in this study to provide a unique, more intimate narrative of the domestic space of, of historically invisible individuals in the 50s and 60s. And uh, I, I will. I start to my project with the following questions. Thinking of the about this uh, theoretical questions allowed me to think about um, what methodology should be used for analyzing the Eaton House. How uh, can the use of space, personal photographs, and memories enhance oral history interview process? These are some questions. Why I chose the Duck Pond neighborhood? Um, this map shows us the larger his North Historic uh, District of Gainesville, where Duck Pond neighborhood, like, uh, sorry, the, the, this is the Duck Pond neighborhood. And um, I have become very interested in studying Duck Pond historic houses and families living in the Duck Pond neighborhood. These houses have been in, an important of Gainesville, uh, Gainesville for several decades and have become historic preservation areas. Therefore, I would like to uncover these aspects of Duck Pond community. Uh, this map uh, also shows a specific location of the house. Uh, here is the Mr. Ethan's house I circled. And um, to these days, we know little about the community that lives there and their domestic lifestyle. Uh, Mr. Eaton and his family have resided in their home for the last three generations there and therefore are able to attest to changes in the, in the use of their living space over a, con a considerable amount of time. This brochure um, from the historic Gainesville organizations and I think uh, in this area, 290 uh, historic houses uh, in this district, which depicts traditional Florida architecture from the late 19th centuries. Uh, okay, why I choose this house? Uh, because the Mr. Eaton house um, is the second oldest home in the, the, this, this, uh, this neighborhood. And Mr. Eaton's grandfather brought the house from the original builder and an owner of the home, and Mr. Eaton's father and Mr. Eaton grew up in this house. Mr. Eaton still lives in the in this house today, and it, uh, it's really difficult to find a uh, original family which still has owned a house since 19, 
1950s, the function of the many historical homes uh, has changed from se uh, simple uh, residence into business or rental properties. But however, um, this house is still used as a home. Mr. Eaton has also been uh, able to witness the changes in the use of this architectural space over a significant period of time. And uh, this is the neighborhood again. This is the yellow part, Mr. Eaton's house. And this image shows the blue part is original plans of the house, the red ones showing the later additions to the house. Okay. Um, uh, coming as an architectural historian, I research space. I wanted to find a different method to get a more profound understanding of this uh, domestic space in the Eaton House. Initially, I was only intending to incorporate the use of photographs to enhance the oral history interview process to get better understanding of the space. But once the Mr. Eaton took me by the hand to tour his home, and I came re to realize uh, how the space itself could be used as a tool to tell a more vivid story of the house, uh, of the use of the space. The following section contains the example of how each discipline can be used to enhance the other and in so doing our understanding of life in the Eaton House. I called my approach a tripod because tri a tripod having three feet like, and uh, is more stable on two feet and for, for fo footed structure. Three feet are three elements, memory in this place, space, memory, space, and photography. The key question guiding the analysis may be, how do we analyze all three disciplines? How can we incorporate all three, three tools? Combining three elements of oral history, personal photography, space, can allow us to find a more vivid and personal represent representation of domestic life in a specific time, in a specific historic area. We will first explore how three disciplines applied in pairs are more, are more useful together than alone in analyzing Mr. Eaton's childhood. Later, we will provide an example of how all three disciplines combined can give, a, give us an even, even deeper understanding of what change, what changes happen, where, when, by whom, and why. Okay, this is the Venn diagram. By analyzing Mr. Eaton interview, we can capture his perspective of the, what it means for Mr. Eaton to live in the 50s and 60s. The interview focused on three critical elements, his personal photos, his memories he attacks to these photos, and the interior living space of his house that exists in, in, at the domestic space of the time. Through his interview, we see dynamic relationship between three elements. They are interconnected through the dialogue. This relation is the best understood through a simple three one diagram of the three elements. Each element can act on its own or act in conjunction with the others. Ultimately, we, we uh, with the all three together, we get not only understanding of Mr. Eaton's life, but also of the life in the duck pond historic neighborhood. Before we illustrate the tripod approach, I would like to explain the relationship between the binary pairs. When any of two, you, you see any of two <coughs> elements are paired together, more information is present, but limited. Adding the three element gives the complete picture. And before adding the third element, however, we must understand the binaries through the some examples. Only after we understand how the, the binaries coexist will uh, we understand <coughs> the tripod approach. Within each pair, there is a directional flow. Uh, the first element listed leads into the second element listed by either explaining it or giving rise, rise to it. Combining any of 
any two of the elements together and reach our understanding. Today's presentation focuses primarily on the binaries approach. I will give more examples from here as the, by, uh, as the basis for the tripod approach. Because of the limited time, I will give you only one concrete example of the tripod approach at the end, which hopefully illustrate the effectiveness of using this combined multidisciplinary method. This is, this is a work in process. I will give more examples in detail in my article. Today, I will just going to illustrate the methodology focus, uh, focuses a larger amount of time on the binaries. And then I'm going to focus on the tripod approach with one solid example. Okay, um, first, um, these, uh, these slides uh, I, sh I create like this. This is Mr. Eaton's quote. These are my notes. And then these, these are the information of the pictures. Um, how did physical space make oral history process more efficient in getting a better understanding of the 50s uh, and 60s lifestyle in this area? The typical methodology of an oral historian involves sitting as with a subject and recording his narrative during an interview process. However, I went to uh, I went into this particular interview with the intention of the finding new approach to the oral history interview process. I intend to use the personal photographs of the fa Eaton's family albums to jog in his memory about his domestic life. However, spontaneously, Mr. Eaton found it more useful to walk around, walk around his home describing its evolution than to sit at the table, discuss whatever change came to his to mind. This aspect of interview process came naturally and without any planning. Initially, when I asked about changes made made to the house at the house, uh, Mr. Eaton had very little to say. However, at at one point, he stood up from the, where we are sitting and took me a tour to the, through the house. At which point, he showed me a recreation room. This is the recreation room. Uh, in his home, which wants uh, a front porch. His parents converted into it into a room complete with the window, windows and uh, shutters called jealousies, which were reminiscent 50s. Had our interview occurred in a library or any other separate location, he may never have mentioned this area of the house. This is a concrete example of space giving rise to a memory, hence the directional flow from the space to memory. So during uh, this interview, Mr. Eaton used the architectural space as a tool to spark memories uh, about specific incidents in his domestic life. We can listen. Mm. See, these are outside windows. Yes. And so the porch was added. I'm, I'm guessing that that was an outside window too, because you can see where they had the, the shutters uh, yeah, right here. Exactly. And so what they did, they and that was probably an outside window too, and they just uh, turned it into a door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this was in 1884. This was mm -hmm. the outside of the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then they came along and changed things and changed things, mm -hmm. and. My mother, mm -hmm. uh, probably in the 50s, this was probably just screen mm -hmm. up until then. And maybe even before that, it was probably just open. Mm -hmm. And then probably somebody put in a screen. And then my mother changed this and turned it into windows. Because these are called jalousies, and they're out of the 1950s. Mm -hmm. You can date something by this. And um, how did oral history make the study of Mr. Ha uh, sorry, Eaton's house more productive? Architecture is not only focused on blueprints, dimensions, on construction. We are also uh, concerned with the use of space. The only way to truly understand the way space is used is through first-hand accounts. 
It was only after touring the home with the Mr. Eaton that we got a better understanding of domestic life in this house during the 50s and 60s. Had we only had the house to study, we may never have learned what certain areas of the house were used for. The image here uh, shows Mr. Eaton's office. Uh, it's filled with the antiques, memorabilia, you know. However, this space was once Mr. Eaton's sister bedroom. There, there are no pictures of this space back in the 50s. There, there is nothing in the room today is to suggest it was a, once a girl's bedroom. But Mr. Eaton account is only source available to attest the changes made to this space. It is his memory gives rise to understanding the space. For this reason, on this slide, you will notice the order of the elements is reversed from the previous slide, the flow here from memory to space. Now this was my sister's bedroom, <laughs> which I've turned into... Workshop areas. <laughs> well, yeah, they, we, she calls it my office, it's not really, but this is my, this is my, a lot of this is my life. And. And we, we are seeing this slide, uh, Mr. Eating giving us a tour of the house. He's describing the space. We, we, we didn't sit on the uh, table and then we got the tour house and then he gives more information, more details about the 50s domestic lifestyle. And then he showed me albums, his pictures, photo albums. He's showing the space. He's showing the materials coming from the past. Okay, how did personal photographs make the oral history process more productive? A photograph um, is a representation of subjects of specific place and time. This photograph would allow the interviewee to focus his narrative on the details that the photograph represents for the interview. interviewee. Using photographs during the interview process allows for a more specific example of daily life and a more intimate account of specific attitudes to certain people, places, events in their life. Upon being asked about the activities he would engage in for entertainment as a child, he had very little to say. Only that he would occasionally go out fishing and hunting with his father. He didn't go any more in the, into detail about his statement until I inquired about this specific photograph. He noted uh, that this area once had a pond which ha uh, held cat catfish where he went fishing. And this was a detail about the area that easily could have gone un undocumented and forgotten had we not presented this image to jog his memory. He also went to, to mention that his, father, his mother was the one who took the picture and took the most of the picture in the family. Without the use of photography as a tool to jog uh, his memory, Mr. Eaton might have never thought to mention this detail about life in the duck pond area. As you can see, this photograph gave rise to his memory that would have been otherwise unstarted, unstated. There used to be a pond. Mm -hmm. If you go down the hill on the right, there was a pond about the size of this room here, give or take a little bit. And it's dried up now, it's gone. But um, I caught that catfish in that pond and I brought it home <coughs> and my mother took a picture of me standing in front of those palm trees uh, and there was more than one picture because in one picture you can see both the palm trees. Uh -huh. So those palm trees have been palm trees a long time. And memory photography. How did oral history improve the study of Mr. Eaton's personal photographs? Photographs, although imp important, have no meaning without the stories behind them. The photos and narratives together support one another to generate meaning about the family and domestic life of the time. 
Often photographs are taken at face value, but stories give us more information to explore what is, what, uh, what is feasibly seen in the image. Together, they create a history about the people that live in the duck pond community and capture what this community has meant and continues to mean to its current residents, ultimately letting us view into private and very intimate lives of the families that live there. The image on the left uh, was an image I found from a magazine taken in the 50s, while this image uh, accurately de depicts what the house looked like, looked like at the time. It gives us a very two-dimensional view of the daily life at the Eaton house. However, at the image on the right depicts children playing with the carriage house in the backyard of the Eaton house. It is only mis when Mr. Eaton described the screen in the image that we understand where the screen was taking place. Carriage house no longer exists at the Mr. Eaton's house. And it was only through the Mr. Eaton's memory and explanation of the photograph that we learn about this part of the house evolution and how the space was used. Without Mr. Eaton's account, we may have not have known where this photo was taken or that the home once had a carriage house in the backyard. Therefore, the order of elements here reversed from the previous slide. It is memory comes first that comes first. Uh, Mr. Eaton's account is only resource that could inform us about what carriage house was used for over the time. Uh, how did use of physical space in the study improve the, er the study of oral, sorry, Mr. Eaton's personal photographs? In architecture, photography is also used to depict um, what a home did did or and did not consist of. Changes made to space suggest a change in those uh, who inhabited in that space in reaction to the air outside influences or circumstances. For example, there is no swing in the backyard today. This is the swing here. And had we only had personal photographs to inform our understanding of the space and how it was used, we would never know that it was taken down or why. If I was only given the information av available in the Madison History Museum or <clears throat> personal photos of the Mr. Eaton to analyze, I would not know what specific questions to reference when inquiring about the changes made, the made to the house. It was when I could walk through the house and compare physical space to the space depicted that I could ask the Mr. Eaton about these specific changes. However, this interview, this interview, Mr. Eaton used the architectural space as a tool to spark memories about the specific incidents in, in his domestic life. For example, on the left-hand figure depicts uh, Mr. Eaton in the front yard next to the swing. This swing was not uh, there uh, when I visited the house. Uh, in the right-hand figure, Mr. Eaton's mother sits uh, with the, his friend and in front, uh, uh, sorry, uh, friend, uh, beside the fireplace with a door behind them. And um, uh, while walking through the, this house, we learned that this door led to the dining room uh, and that the door doesn't even exist in the house anymore. In the bottom picture, um, Mr. Eaton sits on the floor with his mother in front of the Christmas tree in the living room. We can see that this was an open space with a carpet, uh, carpeted floor. Walking through the living room today, we can see the room is now filled with the furniture and the carpet has been taken out and replaced with the wood flooring. We can also note a change in the furnishing style. And how did Mr. Eaton's personal photography make the study of the Mr. Eaton's house more useful as an architectural historian? Space enhanced the usefulness of photographs. From simply observing the current differences between 
a physical space, a photography in which that space is depicted, we can see that change occurred within, within the space. Upon visiting the house, we can clearly see the entrance of the home in the left-hand figure um, is different than what is de depicted in the right-hand figure. This is the old picture, this is new one. We can see the differences. Suggesting ch changing uh, materials used, changing in architectural taste, perhaps damage to the original entrance, etc. Okay, the combining three elements, space, we combine before we see the binaries. Now we, we will see combining three elements, space, memory, and photography. In previous section, we analyzed how two, two disciplines could be combined to provide a better picture of what changed over the time in the use of physical space. This following section will attempt to describe how, how we can combine all three disciplines to give complete account of what changed, where, when, by whom, how, and why. Like a type history, all three elements are interwoven without one, the others lose the meaning or relevances. Each element enhance the other in its own unique way. We can observe by being, by being in actual physical location in question that there is a fence you see in nowadays. I was thinking th this fence, uh, uh, it was here in the past. But no. Uh, however, if we analyze the photos at the same time, this is the old picture, uh, we can see the fence did not stand in the backyard 60 years ago. So from these two elements, we understand what changes in the space and where. It is only once we bring the Mr. Eaton equation and question him to his specific details, he can inform us about who put this fence, when the fence was um, actually added, how it was put in, and why. These three elements together gives us a better picture of how the space was used and how that uh, use changed over the time. Uh, as we can see from the combining three elements, Mr. Eaton house was, wasn't built with a fence. Mr. Eaton did not grow up with the fence. Uh, and he and his wife decided to, to add the fence uh, around the 2014. Why? Because it was accentuated the unique features of the house also keeps in their dogs. How Mr. Eaton was the one who put the fence and where in front of the yard. This is just one concrete example of the tripod approach for lack of the time, this is the only one example I can give you today. But in my article, I will give you more example, this unique tri tri tripod co uh, relationship. And uh, in conclusion, I found this methodology to be more innovative and objective than previous approach to oral history by allowing to cross over between three different disciplines. It also show, allows more, uh, more through the in investigation of past, past lives by improving the interview process and by using physical resources as, as tools rather than supplemental materials. This methodology can be used to uh, collect more useful uh, information for historical re uh, restoration projects. We found through this tripod approach, information that wasn't on record. Through this me methodology, we learn a more a, in deep perspective than a simple interview could have provided alone, or personal photographs could have provided alone, or the space itself uh, could have provided alone. For example, there are no records of how the interior of this house changed, such as furniture, technological advances, or social changes of the home. Having been to house and in interview with along the standing residents, observing his personal photographs, navigating through the space today, we were able to discover 
the narrative of the life few historians would have studied. Learning from the interview, we not only physical elements change about the house, we also learned the life information about the family's life during the mid-century. As an architecture, as part of oral history, is not used as a methodological for drivings and the subjects of narratives. Uh, and most oral historians would overlook this step of the using physical space as part of the interview process. This also applies uh, to the use of photographs as anything other than evidence which validates the narrative of, the inter of an, an interviewee. This material focuses on interviewee's narrative on specific events in a specific uh, sorry, person's life. They allow for a clear trajectory for the path of the interview. Uh, to any future scholars uh, expecting in this study, I will suggest this is a merely a model of how three disciplines can work together to create a more effective interview process to learn about a specific time period in a certain historic neighborhood. It can be extended to incorporate letters. I choose space as an architect, but you can choose letters, diaries, art, music, literature, media, etc. It can be applied to other houses in the Duck Pound area. It is good to see how invisible families lived in this time and how their lifestyle was. This approach allows us to tell the stories of people whose lives were never told before. Th this is the picture, Mr. Eaton family with me. <laughs> yeah, we are. I am the second old uh, daughter right now. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, it, sure. Um, well, a couple of questions. What is, and, and an observation, what is an oral history program? Um, we've had many students who have tried to document aspects of Dutch Pond history and who have not been as successful as they would have liked. Um, and so your project really becomes a model for us to kind of get a better sense of. It's ironic. Sometimes our students, we've been more successful in going to places like Washington, D.C. or Arizona and documenting those histories than we have in our home backyard. Now, so I have two questions for you. One is, I mean, first of all, how do you meet Mr. Eaton? And then also, um, do you think that your role as an outsider, um, how did that impact your research? Do you think that, that made your project somehow more Kind of uh, first, I um, I went to um, I tried to find some old residents, and then I asked my uh, teachers, uh, like Tom, and then I have another teacher, Steve Flox. I heard he lives in Duck Pond, and then I met first with he, I went to his house, and then I asked, "Do you have any old residents, or, or do you have any?" Uh, old residents, you can introduce me. And then he, he introduced me, Mr. Eaton. I never known them before. And then I asked him, Mr. Eaton, do you have any friends? He gave me somebody's numbers. But the thing is, I met a lot of people. Some of them, they, uh, they moved, uh, moved into the Duck Pond area one year ago. Some of them 10 years ago. The only example of the uh, Mr. Eaton's they live, they live, uh, they bought this house. First owner, Mr. Gillis. Second owner, Mr. Eaton's family for the three generation. Uh, they bought this house in 1936. This is the only family I found that um, they still lives over there. Maybe if I stay longer time in here, I can find another families. Yeah, limited time, limited short time. I just, I just focus on the one family. Uh, is, is it good to uh, know a lot of people, network? They give the, somebody, another people's numbers and contact information. I, I was lucky too, <laughs> and God, God helps me. The, the second question, it, what was it? Well, um, as I was wondering, um, I was thinking about your work in tandem 
you know, Alessandro Fratelli, who's really one of the senior oral historians, um, who originally was trained in American literature in Milan, and he's an Italian scholar, but he really began his, his field work in the U.S. interviewing coal miners in eastern Kentucky. And one of the amazing things is that generations of Kentucky historians and anthropologists had tried to do these interviews with coal miners in eastern Kentucky and never succeeded. Hmm. When Sandro came over from Italy, he tells us that his role as a literal, you know, as, as an outsider, as an Italian talking to Appalachian miners, white and black, was actually um, a strength because the, the miners didn't really trust American academics, but they developed a trust for him as an outsider coming in from, from Europe. Mm. Um, I mention this because, again, we've had a lot of grad students and undergrads who have tried to do kind of different neighborhood histories and because of the politics of urban development in Gainesville um, have had different levels of success. It's, it's a loaded, the topic is, this is a loaded topic, to be honest. Um, and so I was amazed throughout the process of your work of how it seemed as an outsider, almost the scene, you know, you work kind of seamlessly um, <laughs> with the Eden family. Yes. Um, and I wonder if, if, you're, if your kind of positionality as a person from out, not only outside of that community, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also outside of the country. Country, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, actually, I think it's, it's my uh, related to my department because architecture uh, is related to design, to create something. I, I, I'm really kind of context people, you know. I really focus on how can um, be searched this neighborhood different from the others. I really focus on this one. And then first I was thinking to use a photography behind these stories because oral history I know use the photography a lot, but uh, uh, usually oral history focus on memories. Okay, I, I was thinking first time I can focus on the photographs behind the stories. I mean, I'm kind of creative people, yeah, person. I try to do suffering, su something different from the other scholars and then uh, but first time I was nervous because th photography I never I'm not used to you know this is not my uh, field but I know how to deal with the space and mem memory but uh, it was kind of risk for me to try to combine three of them but uh, was, during the interview I listened many times and then I found some connections with the, each other and then I try to combine. I mean, as a the, from the different country, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to understand the uh, Americans' history because we don't have segregation in my country. We don't have um, f um, how can I say? In the fifties, I think black community and white community lives different each other. It was hard to understand for me in a look at the historic neighborhood in a political way. Because um, I, for me, I was thinking maybe I can find the black, uh, sorry, African Americans uh, community over over there. But uh, the later, uh, Mr. Eaton told about the uh, 60s um, Yankees or uh, between the war, and then he told about the other stories. Uh, I then and I understand there is a big differences. There is a very, very uh, conservative area. Yeah, it's, it's good to know during the, when I listen them and um, how can I say, it's an experience for me to learn through the interview. It's something creative for me, it's something new for me too. But, yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> Well, I wanted to say, I was really impressed. It was, it's such a, my anthropology, they're always trying to be reflexive. And it was incredibly reflexive because you take your interview and then your methodology appears when you analyze it. Right. And you're really analyzing how this interview went and what these different, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, space and you talk about how we got up in the space right. and how we did that, you really analyze that out really excellent. Oh, thank you very much. So I have a question. I know you did also uh, talk to some other families. Right. 
Is there a way to try to apply the tripod approach even if you don't have all of the direct memories? I know <coughs> one family who um, had researched the house because they took an interest in its history. Is there any way to create a different kind of tripod with that? Uh, as you see, I usually focus on the binaries. If we, maybe we can use, I can show you the, here. Maybe when diagram helps us. Yeah, this one. And maybe, okay, I in also interviewed two different families uh, in this neighborhood, but limited time, limited information. Some families give me uh, uh, limited photography, but they have space, old houses, but they have memory. And then we can use this, just these parts in our research. For example, um, we, uh, okay, the, the whole thing's tripod approach, but this binary is also we can use the, for the other houses, not necessarily only the, the three of them. You can use, for example, that family, if I found a family, they have a literature background, I, I can use instead of uh, space to literature. You know, the third feet always can be changed, can change. Yeah, I mean, is it possible to, uh, we can use the other houses to, uh, by using this approach? <laughs> it's interesting because that's what we do in Lincolnville, but we, we didn't have enough. Mm -hmm. So that's all yeah. I don't know if I just have a comment, but it may be totally unrelated to what you're doing here. <clears throat> but uh, I, I work with the Madison History Museum, and we have um, people here in Gainesville who make a living out of putting properties on the National Register. And I don't, I don't know if you've you know, uh, come in contact with that here in the United States or not, but, but you can have an official legal designation of a property of a historic value. And to be able to do that, you, you put together a document that's maybe half an inch thick or something, <clears throat> that is not a tripod. It, it's a sort of an architectural study. Um, you know, it, it just looks at the, the architecture. It has pictures of the, maybe the outside, and maybe it talks about the style of architecture, maybe Queen Anne, you know, or, or Victoria, or whatever it is, which, which is not a tripod. And, and I'm just wondering if, I don't know if you're going to be working in the future on, on this project. Or this I would love to come again. <laughs> um, it seems to me that some of the, um, the approaches you use would enhance um, the whole process of putting properties on the National Register, although it's not required. I mean, you, you have federal standards or, or expectations of what a, a submission is going to be, but um, I'm wondering if that could just really enrich the, the whole process of documenting all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it works. So you, if you're going to be working on this in the future, you might want to scratch your head and think about how it could um, pertain to um, to the National Registry submission. I would love to. It's possible, yes. Just to say that while we were talking about this project before, um, we had just come back from White Springs, and we had had experience where actually touring around the space where the interviewee grew up, we found so many more stories that All right. we uncovered. Um, like interviewing Teddy Bear Marshall, we went to um, the, uh, the salt, Sulphur Springs, or the... It's, uh, well, it is a Sulphur Springs. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, it was only when we were actually there and walking around that he pointed out like this outline like right next to the spring. Um, and it was concrete on the ground, and it was, um, he told us that it used to be a segregated pool that um, they were not allowed in. And when two African Americans uh, jumped in one night, they filled up the pool. And that's a story we would never have gotten had not actually explored the spaces that we mm -hmm. went to as a kid. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the use of space is. Definitely a um, more story. A, a tool that is not used as much as I think it should be mm -hmm. in the digital process. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Right. That's why end of the presentation, I j just suggest the people, I mean, is there an inno innovative way to um, think about the process again, oral history process again, oral history pro uh, interview again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Would the uh, come, uh, phone, please? Um, I can send mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she is waiting. <laughs> All the mother, same. 